Hey everyone, quick little announcement here from Fish in the DMV. Our weekend warrior package on Patreon is nearly full. There are only 48 spots still available. Once these spots are gone, they're gone, and the weekend warrior tier will be closed to the general public. All members will be locked in indefinitely at a fantastic price point, and they will get all the benefits that they have today, plus any new benefits and discounts that will be added in the future. All weekend warriors will receive 5% off their orders to Jake's Bait and Tackle, 10% off their orders to Tiger Crankbaits, 10% off their orders to Catoctin Creek Rod. They'll also gain access to our private Facebook group community, loads of members only content. And in 2025, there are gonna be tournaments that will be given a massive discount specifically to our weekend warrior members. Plus, if you sign up for the year right now, you will get 8% off your already fantastically discounted rate to join the Weekend Warrior program. Link in the episode description. Thank you. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Monday Night Live. We are back here, October 28th, the end of the spooktacular season here. I, again, truly apologize. This is the first Monday upload I think I've missed in two years, and we're on our third year anniversary of the channel, and I apologize, but... Uh, we did a thing yesterday. We uh, we cracked a win at the ninth annual Butch Ward tournament. It was a, a team event that I fished by myself, and somehow I went on Big Slack, aka the Ohio River of Maryland, um, to really just get the to the approval of all of my you know all of the people I look up to, all the veterans of the river. That was really really cool because it's one thing to do this, but then it's kind of like to set the comments aside that I actually know how to fish and use a rod and reel. So that's kind of cool there too. And get the respect of all the people that I enjoy. We have a lot of content going on about that later this week. That's not what this show is about. We are going to have a Patreon members only live stream where I'm going to go through all the baits and everything that I did to win. And we also have a video that's going to be coming out as well since I YouTube the whole thing. So if you guys have questions or comments, we're going to have a great show for you today here. First one up, uh, he runs a nice little website. You probably have heard of it called The Bass Cast. And he also has a podcast that we do every Wednesday night. I think it airs. I don't know. Or we just been talking like Mad Men every wednesday for the past year brian thank you so much What's for coming on the up? show um dude thank you so much for coming on today uh yes we must, we must get this other guy in here too he does a how-to channel which is absolutely fantastic he puts bill dance fluke master and probably tactical va- bass into shame matt allen you heard me here the bass geek sir thank you so much for being here What's going on, you bunch of yahoos? It's. I'm glad that we're back here again before we do our regular Wednesday routine. <laughs> yes. Every guys out there, we drop it on Monday. So um, the new episode dropped this morning at 5 a.m. We have Brother Gene Jensen on, and it was a freaking awesome show. It really was. I mean, we talked about a lot of great things. So check it out. Uh, we can dive deep. I mean, I was going to say, for the people at home, give them a little hors d'oeuvre of what we did in that yeah, episode. Yeah. Um, if you guys haven't seen <clears throat> Gene lately, Gene's had a, a major change in life and uh, he dropped about, I think he told us 83 pounds. And we talk about that. We talk about YouTube, life, the channel. I mean, I mean, what did I say? He's got like 300,000 followers, some crazy number. And then we dive into his uh, first Bass Nation kayak win. And uh, we'll see him in Texas in 2025 at the Bassmaster Classic. And this time he won't be in a booth, guys. He'll be actually fishing. So mm-hmm. it's a great show. It's uh, We kind of tiptoe through all of it. And it's not but a little over an hour. So head on over to Bass Guest Radio and take a listen. What I really wanted to do today was that conversation with, with, with Fluke Master. I don't know if we call him Gene or not. I don't know if that's appropriate. But anyway, with Fluke Master the about... Fluke. <laughs> about the content creation side of things and the pro industry. And I've had a lot of people that I've talked to privately after recording and stuff. And it's like, well, you can't do that stuff on YouTube because it's just their content creators. They're not really fishermen. And I'd be like, well, what if Hank Parker or Bill Dance did a show on Bugs Island after a win? And he'd be like, well, that's fine because it's on Fox News. It's like, okay, but what if somebody with the same studio production did the same thing, but he put it on YouTube? Mm. And it's like, well, that's that's different. Isn't that just, that's our TV right now. Isn't Milliken, Scott Martin, they're just TV production companies basically at this point, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, they are. You know, I mean, 
uh, the NFL sees the value in YouTube. So, and I mean, they basically print money. I mean, they are, you know, one of the, they are the most profitable uh, sports organization in in the U.S., if not the world. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, I mean, you know, to me, it gives a platform for, you know, the regular guy to come out because I, you know, I tell people all the time, I mean, I'm nobody special. I'm just a fat man with a GoPro. Anybody can do what I'm doing. (laughs) Like, but like Deke just said, guys, I mean, it is the new norm. YouTube is, I mean, there's two kids here that have probably never turned on a TV. I mean, in their whole entire life, if you, maybe when they were a kid, but other than that, I mean, the teenagers now are on YouTube. So if you're not on YouTube, period, I don't care whether it's a podcast show or just a little clip about your business organization, um, weekly updates about your business. If you're not on YouTube, you're like losing out. I mean, because there's a ton of people on YouTube. Is it just the changing of the times? I think that's what it is. It's again, like it's like the whole live scope argument. It's people that didn't grow up with this that are the ones that I feel like that are hating on it or giving up secrets and things when it's just teaching, like, like the idea of somebody putting out a, how to throw a jig or this is how I caught him in the tournament. And then you can be, you could be ostracized from your friend group if you do that, because you gave up the juice on your body of water. And it, it's fascinating. You have that head butting there, but then you're also seeing when it comes to sponsorship dollars, who cares if you win 36 tournaments, how many followers do you have? Yeah. And I always use, you know, listen, no, no disrespect, but I use Gerald Swindell as a perfect example of that. People love Gerald Swindell for who he is. Now, he has won two anglers of the year, but he don't own an elite trophy. Mm-hmm. He's nope. never won one. So, you know, he's one of the biggest names Wait. in the in – the, in the professional he was a, tournament. He was series. a good promoter. And he, yeah, the promotion, exactly. The promotion part is where it all came in and the personality that people want to be. And you're seeing it now. I mean, Danielle and I are watch. you know, when we do watch football, because we do watch football here, a lot of it. And there's what, the two brothers, the one is Dayton. Um, I don't know what her name is, the blonde. But he's on like 10 different commercials now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was looking at someone else the other night. The, <laughs> and even uh, his Jamie, brother's on 10 different commercials. Yeah, Jamie Foxx is on like three or four. I mean, mm-hmm. so we're it's kind of this narrow thing where if you have a brand or a following already, I mean, you probably get paid almost as much as you do for a movie for a 30-second commercial. It's going to air a bazillion times. Is it helping so or hurting I mean, the industry? Or is it just a change? I think it's just a change. I think it's what people, the kids are looking up to these days. I think that's true. Um, I mean, you look at, I think Milliken's a classic example of that where, you know, he made his bones on YouTube before he made the crossover and yeah, he can catch them, but he could probably leave Bassmaster tomorrow and it probably wouldn't hurt his bottom line at all. And it's just this weird fight that we all have when you talk behind the scenes of competing for this corporate dollar and, and, and partially I kind of blame, I think there's a lot of factors going into that. One is I think it's YouTube's fault and I will still believe that. Um, in the conversation we had with, with, um, with fluke master, it was about jumping into different platforms. In my personal opinion, I still think YouTube is the platform it will be because the millennials is the, the biggest generation we have because alpha and Z are smaller, which means mm-hmm. we are going to age into YouTube more. And that's where you got to be. And YouTube doesn't pay out as well. Now, we haven't had an AdSense crisis like we did earlier, but right, they're the big kid on the block. And if they would open up the coffers a little bit more, I think that really would help a lot of people when it comes to this fighting for the dollars that are in Dial or or Cashin or or whatever bait companies that are out there. Yeah, They did change. I mean, they did change a couple of years ago. And I know you geek, you know more about this, about... um, being able to get money, I think you went from like having to have a thousand followers to five hundred, and then yeah, they, well, they you, changed- you still gotta have a you still gotta have a thousand mm-hmm. followers. You've gotta have a thousand followers, and I think they lowered the watch hours. The so hours, I think okay, it's something they like hours. five thousand watch hours. 
which sounds like a lot, but it's really not if, if you're consistent with it. Uh, <clears throat> the big thing about YouTube and, you know, the, the, the drop in pay really came right around the time that TikTok jumped out. And, you know, they were, you know, you could tell YouTube was scrambling. They started pushing the shorts before the algorithm was ready. Uh, and, you know, they, they didn't know how to monetize that. And, you know, they've done a better job. Uh, and, and I think that's, I think the shorts have split their audience. But if you pay attention now, and I'll, I watched something the other day because, you know, this is where I live. YouTube is where I live. So, uh, you know, we do things on other channels, but when it comes to, you know, really wanting to grow a channel, uh, YouTube understands they don't make money on shorts. Mm -mm. So if you pay attention, they've done away with all links in shorts. You have zero links. Mm -hmm. uh, the only link you have now is to buy something via their YouTube shop or a redirect to a long play video. And that's what YouTube wants you to do with shorts. They want you to make long play videos and use shorts as for better or for worse ads or samples or, you know, trailers for them to send people back to those paying long plays that's that's what they like the, want to do like the op the opius clips that we do here on basket yeah I mean, exactly that's mm -hmm. and uh, it cuts up our show and makes a little clips and then we upload it yeah. to them uh geek has, has youtube really started paying for the shorts or did they they're nothing they really, are yeah they're, they are they're paying, paying. Okay. uh now mind you i'm in the creator fund which it changed a while back on <laughs> <laughs> Shoot, I forgive me. I am. I do have a cold. Uh, I'm. I'm in the creator fund on TikTok. I make nothing off that. Like TikTok, you're not making money on from TikTok. It's all right. ads or TikTok shop or something like that. You know, I don't do TikTok sh TikTok shop and all that stuff over there. Heck, I don't even do YouTube shop. Uh. But, uh, you know, YouTube did, we, you know, we, it was almost a 30% drop off. Now it's came back up, but it's not to the level it was before that, that drop, uh, a little while ago. And I think that was a mix of the shorts, you know, the competition with TikTok and, you know, the economy after the, uh, you know, the, the virus of unknown origin. Mm -hmm. Yes. It, 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 but I mean, it's go for it. Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, it's like Geek said. I mean, it's the being on TikTok and being on other social media platforms. I was talking to someone today about it and they're looking <laughs> to diversify as well. And if, you know, wherever your bread and butter is, like the Basscast, the website itself, you know, we try to push everything, you know, you're trying to push your people back to the website because that's how you get paid. And it's same with Geek, you know, putting up the shorts on TikTok and any other platform that he's using, Twitter, Twitter, TikTok, uh, which is pretty big on and uh, send it back to YouTube. It's it's interesting because with and you know and there are some really good comments here by uh, Terrible at Fishing about how they're trying to compete with TikTok and I think it really has hurt what is the value of a view and this is something that I hypothesize because I've gone to sponsors when I've tried to get sponsors and stuff and there and you have such a weird thing where I think the businesses don't know what the hell is going on the YouTubers don't know what the hell is going on and regular angler doesn't know to where you get a guy that has a decent following on TikTok and he does think he's hot shit for fishing a pond. And then he goes to a company <clears throat> expecting $100,000. And then you have a company run by, you know, Suzanne, who maybe got a GED. And she just thinks this is how much, you know, SB fishing or, or, or geek should be worth. And you're like, nah, nope, that's not the case. And so why is there such a weird disconnect where it feels like no one understands what the right playbook is to go forward? I think in the beginning, a lot of the companies 
when, a, you know, just like anything else, AI, the whole nine yards, everybody's going crazy. But I think the companies really didn't really understand the whole entire thing. They just up Joe Blow and started throwing money. And they're like, oh, we're not getting anything for this anymore. And the numbers really weren't there. And they they just, you know, a lot of them just locked their purses up. I mean, at the in the end. But there's more that goes. I mean, Geek can dive in this because, I mean, his channel probably tells him algorithms, numbers, how many hours watched. How many hours started watching it? I mean, <clears throat> away. I mean, there's so much that goes into it now that plays into how the companies are paying you. I remember a video I watched a while back, and a guy said if he didn't have 5,000 followers, they wouldn't even sponsor him, period. Mm. And that's a low number now. I mean, shit. I, well, think, I think someone told me 20,000 the other day for a company. Well... <clears throat> I'm going to throw a, a number I just kind of learned out there. Um, uh -oh. <clears throat> now, I will be the first to tell you, like, I didn't get any sort of real sponsorship offers uh, and companies reaching out to me. And, and you know, we've talked about this before. Some of the toughest part of, uh, of YouTube because, you know, creators don't share, especially in this seems like this realm they don't share and uh you know I, I was lucky enough to have a couple people reach out to me and start saying hey you know bigger creators that were like and and it really is uh you know one of the you know i'm i'm always you know of the belief that you know my yard my house do what you want but when you get a lot of creators who don't understand what their value is and they're taking free stuff constantly they hurt the market mm -hmm. and that was what i was told by larger creators as i was growing because i was happy to not pay for certain baits mm -hmm. and i will tell you i learned this from a sponsor not too long ago but uh, basically anybody that is in the know, and there are a lot of fishing companies that ain't, I can tell you right now, they ain't mm -hmm. like I have educated a lot of companies. And I mean, I, I'll go into deep dive on you on what I tell people. Uh, and I mean, I'll make your eyes bleed right now, <laughs> but uh, you know, I can tell you what a view is worth. Uh, I'll tell you what a thousand is worth and what you should be asking. And what you should be asking is a hundred dollars per thousand on average. Your average should be, should be over your last 15 videos, seven days. You know, you want at least seven days on, on. So, so seven days ago from there, we take your last 15 videos. We drop the two highest and the two lowest. And that'll tell you what your average really is. And that's what you should be charging. So to get a little, uh, so to get a little crazy with the tinfoil hat, is it, is it the YouTube side of things? Is it the corporate sponsorship side of things that are trying to keep this hush hush, the, what the real value should be? Uh, <clears throat> you know, I think, I think YouTube, I think, Fishing, I think bass fishing, um, is a conservative practice, right? Most people that fish are of the conservative mindset. And I think most people that fish are, uh, are taught to not talk about pay. And I also think, and I know from talking to some YouTubers, that the fishing industry, you know, whether you believe you're competing with uh, the pros uh, or whether you believe you're competing with other YouTubers, you know, there's only so many dollars mm -hmm. inside mm -hmm. the fishing industry. And I think that's why the fishing industry, I think you're taught, you know, look, you know, most people are taught, look, we don't talk about pay, uh, which I was lucky enough to have a business guy years ago when I had my first IT job 
uh, take me to some conferences. I don't know why he was, I guess he seen that I was, you know, very interested in, you know, the entrepreneurial sort of thing. And, uh, you know, one of the things that one of the guys said a long time ago is that it's a farce, that it's, it's a load of crap that, uh, <clears throat> that you shouldn't talk about money because that's how rich people stay rich. And that's how pe rich people, because that's all they ever do is talk about money. Mm -hmm. uh, they talk about money with each other. So, uh, you know, and they tell you not to talk about money so they don't have to pay you more. <laughs> so dude, that is, but that, that is, is so true. true. Yeah. That is very true. <clears throat> and it's such a weird thing. And, and I know like I can used to talk on Ike live and then guys, again, like drop a comment. If you want to talk about something, just bring a, bring a question or, or a topic up for us to discuss. Um, about unionizing he was big before mlf became a thing on ike live talking about we need to union we need to union and that's not going to happen i don't think that's the best thing but you're right like i but the problem is also is like perception is reality and if you go to a mom and pop shop and you tell them i get a hundred dollars every thousand views and they laugh you out of there because two other people are willing to do it for a buck fifty it's like there, there's nothing you can do about it and I think that is fascinating where you say like there's a race to the bottom, so to speak, where if everyone around you is willing to take less, it doesn't matter how valuable you are. You're going to be underbid, I guess, for yes. those contracts. Yes. Yeah. Um, I did a podcast a while back on, you know, the pro staff part of it. It's been a while and, you know, people got burnt out on pro staff. Um, and that was just the way that, so many companies were going after these young kids and what if i mean and like geek was saying it's kind of hurting the industry because i can send them 25 dollars in product which cost me maybe 10 bucks maybe less than that mm -hmm. and uh i got these kids hooked and they might shoot two or three videos and you never know what happens i mean because you're paying pennies on the dollar compared to what you would pay a geek or someone else on the YouTube world. I, and, and content is cheap, honestly. If you're a if you're a company, you can get 6,000 oh, yeah. people to shoot a video on your phone now, but <clears> it's <throat> about the following behind it. And I don't know, it's going to be interesting to see how that evolves. Um, and this is a interesting hot subject here that we could bring up. Brandon says, what do you think killed the co-angler? I think it was forward-facing sonar. And then he also says, or mm -hmm. kayaks. Um, I can start off with that. Um, Brandon, you're full of shit. It was not forward facing sonar. <laughs> I it, agree with that. It was, I think kayaks did take a, a chunk. I think bass yeah. and MLF and all of them will never tell you the truth. Like, Hey, we're in a recession. Look at the gas pump prices, but they will never yes. tell you. That's the reason we've gone from 10 BFL divisions back before COVID to, I think five that we talked about on, on, on your show, Brian. We're yeah. in a recession. They're blaming other things because they don't want to say the quiet part out loud. Listen, I I seen somebody talking about it the other day. We're in worse than a recession. We are in a depression. They're not going to say it, but the actual statistics are as bad in most areas, if not worse, mm -hmm. than depre than the depression air numbers were economically. Uh <clears throat> and of course they're not going to say it because they don't want people panicking more and tighten their belts even more and not spending because then that just, that just snowballs things. But you're right. I think kayak fishing was a lot because I know a lot of guys that sold their bass boats and got, got into the kayak fishing game forward facing sonar. Listen, I, I've got, I had a co-angler that fished with me, traveled with me. Um, when I fished the mountain division, last year or the year before i can't even remember bfls and those are all highland board facing sonar lakes this dude proved to me so and i've been a co-angler i co-angle i co-angle for four years so i don't want to hear no whining about this the rule is fishable water it's not against the bank it's not and you can go complain to the to the guy the the tournament director will tell you because I've heard it fishable water. And <clears throat> that means if you, if he's putting you against a bank on a Highland reservoir on a bluff and it's a hundred foot on the other side, guess what? You fishing a hundred foot on the other side and they don't care. That's fishable water. But that guy 
fished with guys who scoped all year and made the region and caught fish behind them because he he used his mind. He didn't fish traditionally or the way you normally would. He found ways to catch those fish and thought about ways to catch those fish Mm -hmm. that maybe didn't bite that, that boater's bait as they followed back, you know, to the boat and lingered around because they do. So, you know, to me, a lot of the forward faces on our stuff's just excuses. Listen, I, I tried to get one of my co-anglers, I left my back graph on and I know because I had to rig vertically with a 2D sonar and I know that the hit is live. Boys and girls, for you people that don't know, live has been around a lot longer mm-hmm. than just forward-facing sonar. There is a thing mm-hmm. on, the, on there called a RTS. It is a, it is a real-time transducer where you drop your bait and you can watch it. You watch a little fish come up there. And you can set off the back of the boat if you get your co-angler to do that. And when those fish get under the back of the boat, you can drop a little Domeki rig right down to those bass. Guys, let me know in the comment section what you guys think. I know we got Big D TV in here, 100% FFS, uh, only when your boater is mean. Uh, follow, uh, following up with the boater with a different lure and casting where he skips is key. Uh, Big D, uh, you, uh, young, young YouTuber, started in the kayak world. He did fish co-angler in the BFLs this year. Uh, That's cool. I'm going to be getting you on the show. Uh, I think it's like this Friday, bud. But um, it, it, it's interesting to me because I've, I've had a lot of friends that fish uh, the co-angler and they are pissed off about the BFLs and what has happened. Um, they went to a three fish limit, which I honestly, ABA did that. I don't care as much. It's probably for fish health. You can argue me on either side of the fence there. Um, I, I just don't think it was just forward facing sonar. I think it's also the payouts too, guys. The BFLs oh, payouts God, are they're shit. Awful. They're terrible. Horrible. <laughs> and, and again, and, and if you guys know that I have a cracked lid in my boat that is still hasn't been fixed. Back in 2018, I had a guy. He was about 900 pounds. Jump on the back of my boat as a co, and he snapped it. He spilled dye and stuff, oh, and all this other stuff. I did have a bad experience. I'm not going. I'm not going to lie. And there's a lot of great, beautiful people out there that are co anglers. Good Christian people. I love all of you. It's fine. But this guy did all this, and then still was bitching that he wasn't catching fish. Now you oh, have wow. to tell me. Do I, I want found to out if he, if he floated? I and guess what? I'm like, oh, there's a series now where I pay the same or a little extra not to have a co angler, and it I can just I can set up yeah, a camera. Like, wh- why wouldn't I want to do that? That's what I was getting ready to drop. I mean, you know, Cat came out with the the no co angler <laughs> tournaments um, called Bass Kings, and um, the Elite Seventies came out with their own uh, event, and the ABA came out with their event this year. So, I mean, what's another 50 bucks to fish without someone you having to share the money with? And you don't have to share your spots, your location, what you learn in practice. That's a big one. I didn't think of that. Yeah. Yeah. What you learn in practice. So, I mean, you're sharing no information whatsoever. And I ain't going to say information is gold, but it probably is gold, really. I mean, because you know a stump, tree, whatever is buried here and... But that's all changing. Geek can tell you that straight up with forward facing sonar. I mean, it's everybody will know where every tree is. If you spend time on that water, spend time, uh, you will know where pretty much if you fish a, a section of the lake, you break the lake up, you will know where trees, rocks, dumps. I think in the next five or six years, I don't think you really have to graph anything anymore and just hear hear me out here and this was my epiphany when i was practicing for this other thing i was not graphing rocks and stumps i was basically looking for fish with my forward facing sonar because i know where every rock is and i think if navionics or some of these mapping companies we how many how many people have graphed gunnersville for god's sakes we know every rock and stump so what are you going to be doing with your side scan? It's fish, right? Because you, you probably have everything marked in your local body of water. And so how does that change the whole dynamic there? I don't know where I was going with that rant, but it, it was something that popped <laughs> into my head. Um, now, I will say this. There there are times. So, you know, I fish Highlands Reservoirs. I, I go fishing yesterday. Uh, you know, this is a tough lake. Uh, it can be phenomenal. 
But when it's tough, it's brutally tough. It Saturday it took four, I think it was four point five three to win a five fifty. Oh my gosh! Day shift sounds like my place. Uh, God. Now God what's God funny is is they had a night tournament there and it took six over sixteen pounds to win the night tournament from four o'clock wow. till eleven. So for whatever reason, the feeding window was obviously going on sometime, and even water temps. Ultra clear lake, of course, water temps 63, right? Yeah. Um, well, we went out fishing it yesterday, and, you know, lucky enough that we caught two fish, we could have ended up in second place <laughs> at the tournament on Saturday. Wow. Uh, but uh, but the, the thing of it is, is that lake is normally a, it's a scope lake, but the shad were spread out. They were on the bottom 50 feet deep. There was no bass around them. And we had to go to, to fish in, you know, traditional patterns. And so what really helped me there and what's funny is uh, when you see these traditional patterns, yes, I was still looking for certain rocks or certain ledges on points where I was still seeing the fish on the bottom in 25 foot of water and catching them dragging a Texas rig or catching them throwing a spinner bait over trees. Mm-hmm. So live scope still plays shallow. And I was throwing yeah. a, or first thing in the morning, I was throwing a uh, spinner bait in, you know, zero foot of water and watching to see what, what chased or what showed itself even if they're tight to the bottom because like you know where where i'm at um it's kind of like like conowingo for people that don't know what that it's where the, the susquehanna river is dammed up it's the same thing big slack is just the dammed up potomac river and it's about 28 25 feet at the deepest point but it's basically a swollen river like a tva system with a bunch of ledges and those smallmouth will lock on the bottom of a, of a river mm-hmm. which is rock you ain't seeing them Mm-mm. but what you're looking for is activity anything um, yes. uh, here's a tip that I'll give away to everyone that's not a Patreon supporter. If the water's shallow enough and a boat runs through, it stirs the water up and it spooks fish and they start moving. And, yes. and, and small mouth are, are, are curious. Mm-hmm. So yes. they'll, I call them tattletale fish. <laughs> when you go over top of them, <laughs> one will come up out of those rocks. Just be like, what's that? And then you're yep. like, if there's especially small mouth, mm-hmm. there'll be more in that spot. And, and that's Sorry, what's key. No, no, no. You're, you're right, though. But that's what's important is I, I a lot of times it wasn't like I would see the fish hit my bait. It was I needed to see that there was some kind of movement so I would slow down yeah. and fish that area. Um, and that goes back to, you know, even the lakes like I would I would I would freak people out because I would go down bluff walls and and, you know, heavy rock walls on Cherokee and I'm I'm graphing in you know trying to stay in that 10 foot water i've done this ever since 2d and i'm going down through there 10 20 feet and i'm looking for that one arch or for that one dot i'm doing that on the sides of points Mm -hmm. i'm looking for that one dot Mm -hmm. that's going to be buried up in those rocks those rocks that are six feet tall with you know crevices on cherokee and when i see that i'm coming back I'm throwing a drop shot or a wacky rig or, you know, maybe a swim bait over top of them. And a lot of times that's how you found these little groups of bass that uh, and, and it had nothing to do with, with live scope. It takes more work. That's really all live scope is. It's mm-hmm. just less work, less, less effort. Mm-hmm. No, I 100% agree with that. We got a, we got a question here on Instagram. StreamYard, could you make it so I could share these comments? Because please, I, I spent, <laughs> give you enough money. Uh, Billy Cole says the amount of time you have to put in now to break in or provide what these companies want is not a good ROI anymore. Uh, oh yeah, I, I I agree with that honestly. It's and I think things getting monopolized. This is the other thing that I get really pissed off with with the fans out there is when they enjoy monopolies and big big companies and stuff. You you have to understand if everything went away, it was just bass. 50% of the pros are gone. If all of the companies come together into one company, 
fifty percent of the people that get paid are gone, and, and it's mm-hmm. it's scary. I think it was a group message we were on, like Phoenix Rods got bought out. I like Phoenix Rods for a lot of different situations. They're probably going to go away potentially in the next you know five or six years or whatever happens. And it's weird that we're in this stage that it just seems like Robo Worm was another one a couple of weeks ago that got gobbled yep. up. Yep. Wow. I, I'm frustrated with that because. Again, it's just this idea you go to iCast and then it's like, oh, everything's doing great. But you look behind the scenes, it's like, I don't feel that way. <laughs> I, I did. Uh, I agree there. But I it's say also that there's a generation and the generation that, I mean, if you're a robo worm, has been around, good God, forever. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, there's just a generation that don't want to pick up the slack in making plastics like they used to. And, I mean... There it is, geek. We're all IT kids now. I mean, I can make more money sitting on my laptop than I can making a yes. worm for five yes. cents. Mm-hmm. I mean, the money's just not there. I mean, it really isn't when you can have a better income on a computer than you can. I mean, I was talking to uh, Scott with the Big Bash Tour the other day, and we're we're talking about we brought up the topic we had about sponsors and people losing sponsors. And I want to tell you this real quick. Get out of the business of bass fishing if you really want to sponsor. Go as far away from bass fishing as you can. Mm-hmm. But, you know, how they're getting bought yeah. up, like you were saying. <clears throat> and, I mean, it's just – it's a dog-eat-dog world right now. And But they're getting them for cheap. I mean, if I got if I got five different lure companies that I can get a guy over there in China to make 10 mm-hmm. bazillion for me – and I get them, and he was the guy I bought it from was paying twenty five cent. And now I'm paying ten because I need I'm buying more quantity. Then I mean, it's a win 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 for them. We got a really good question. And some of these people don't even know anything about bass yeah. fishing. Uh, we got so many questions here. I'm gonna try to get to a couple of these since they're topical. Uh, who bought Phoenix? I think it is. Um, oh God. G- GSM. Thank you. Acronyms are kryptonite. Yeah. Uh, Which they- is the same people that bought. Uh, um, Yamamoto Bay. Yamamoto, yeah. Uh, who else was it that they bought? But they're um, so they're a. They were originally. There's a, a jig company, company that they bought. Yeah, they they they're a conglomerate. Dude, they're just buying stuff yes. left and right. Um, yeah. Yes. And Dobbins, like I mean, Dobbins got bought. Uh, let's see, Big Deep. Dobbins got bought out too by Mr. Dobbins. Made sure he still stays in the loop with what is happening. It's yeah. Like, it, yeah, it won't last long. It won't. It really won't. Um, Never does. And then we got uh, another one here, which is good. Is it, uh, anyone think YouTube is a monopoly causing this? Oh, God, they're a monopoly. Yes, they are. They are. Uh, it, the You can't fathom the amount of money. Like, it is the biggest... Alphabet is the biggest company, I think, on Wall Street for the Fortune 500, one of the top three. It is massive. And the only one that could potentially compete with them is Netflix or Amazon. I know at Netflix... Five years ago, at least I learned this in school, they thought about going the YouTube route and they ended up investing in in Korean stuff. Um, but I eventually, I think somebody, maybe Elon with X, will come into this range because it's it's Hollywood even has announced YouTube is bigger than them. YouTube is bigger than anything on the planet at this point. Oh, yeah. Um, let's see. Got a couple more good ones here before we keep going. Uh, Thomas may have a bit. Yeah, but Travis, uh, message me. And let's get you on this show. Uh, they bought RoboWorms too, right? I forget who bought yeah. RoboWorms. I forget. Was it the same one that bought Phoenix Rods? Or is it someone else? That's uh, GSM. G- if, that's if, insane. Yeah. I didn't know they bought Robo Worms. Yeah, I didn't know they had either. Let um, me get to this one. And we have a Patreon question here, which is uh, to everyone in the chat, who would you want to get to run MLF if Boyd Duckett mysteriously had an accident? That is dark. <laughs> Dude. If I accidentally cut his mm. brake lines tomorrow. <laughs> mm. I'm going I'll- Vince McMahon. I would really. <laughs> well, after- I don't know. He's. He's in the middle of maybe some <laughs> sexual trafficking. Um. <laughs> At oh this God. point, I want them to just embrace the circus, go full yeah. crazy with Vince McMahon, and your ratings would spike a little. Uh, I'll say, I for some reason, when KVD retired, I thought he was going to take over Major League Fishing. And I really did yeah. because they needed a face that everyone liked. Uh, and... That would free up Boyd so he could be that extra person to fish his leagues. 
But uh, yeah, I, I, for some reason, we were really hoping KVD was going to take over, and that's my two cents because you know his he has a he has a great. I mean, he's been with Bass Pro Shop now for like twenty some years, twenty five mm-hmm. years. Johnny Martin owns part of Major League Fishing, mm-hmm. and he's I, I figured he would just pick his best friend in the world of bass fishing and take it all over and push him out the door. There's my two cents. I- and we have like Denny Brower saying the problem is if you it's kind of like running for president or office it's a shitty job they're going to dig up dirt on you and 50% of the people are going to hate you so I, I just if you're Kevin Van Dam who at this point is beloved I would say generally speaking it, I just feel like that's a step down like it, I don't know yeah <clears throat> I would take the rock that way when somebody's sassed he I, can just I know slap him. terrible fishing Give the rock would be good the elbow <laughs> That's one said the rock. I just embrace <laughs> the awesome. embrace the cartoon. After we we talked about those three press releases and how much of a craziness that it was, just get mm-hmm. some kind of person in there that could suck the oxygen out of the room, um, or hire everybody that is from the MPFL because right now I think they're they're winning in a lot of ways. Denny Brower is also a fantastic choice as well. Um, with with all that said, what is the preparations that you guys are going to be doing going into next year? We're in this weird lull right now, going in November basically. If you look at the calendar, and then for me, things get going in January because I'll be I'll be doing the content for Raleigh Fishing Expo, Richmond Fishing Expo, and then before you know it, people are going to be down south getting ready to fish again. In this lull, is it all about sponsorships for both of you? What's happening? You want me to go? Uh, anyone yeah. Uh, so yeah um yeah <laughs> to be honest that's really it i mean and i am the world's worst at it i'm not gonna lie i i just get so wrapped up into the website as a whole that i forget about it till i don't have any money so yeah i mean i mean no other way to say it uh but yeah that's pretty much what we're working on now i already have my new letter typed up it's ready to go I just need to add some new numbers to it. It's been an amazing 2024. Thank you guys. Uh, we broke another record. Um, we keep growing Thank each you. and it. We keep growing each and every year. And uh, I would love for us to hit a million page views this year. If you guys could head on over wow. and check out the website, mm. but we're almost <laughs> to a million guys. And for someone who started the website, putting flyers on cars in parking lots back in 08, 09, 010, to get to where we are now. I mean, I wasn't in a hurry to build anything. I took my time and here we are now, but gosh, what a roller coaster, what a ride it's been. It's been pretty freaking awesome. So thank you guys for being a part of that. But yeah, if you want to sponsor the basscast.com, I got numbers. I got more numbers than you can think about, but you're going to get a heck of a deal because we're in bass fishing. We can't charge what, like Geek was talking about earlier, I'm supposed to be charging double what I'm charging. But because we're in a niche sport, it's, where there's not a huge really, a lot of money, yeah. that's I can't uh, charge it. You know, I I told everybody, you know, and you can you can see us talk about this on on the last Basscast mm-hmm. with the uh, with the Fluke Master. But you know, if you want to get into YouTube, <clears throat> there's so many other ways to make money, great money. Like there's great money in YouTube. There's not in the bass fishing, side. especially if you're a girl. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, if you got boob. <laughs> I mean, listen, I've tried a fish bra. I mean, I got a pretty, you know. I mean, <laughs> but it just don't go over. Took down. Just took down. Oh my oh, god! Geez. But yeah, like you're but, talking uh, about con, like a uh, pop culture, video games for God's sakes, it's huge. But you're right, we're yeah. a niche of a niche of a niche. Yes, and, but I'll tell you, you know, this, guys, right now, even with the female side of it has kind of dropped off because I think it was an overkill. It was a mental overkill. And yeah. even that you're seeing a lot fewer of that happening. And, you know, Bassmaster started just this year, came out Bassmaster her <clears throat> and to get more female anglers involved in fishing tournaments. But you're not seeing the YouTube side of as much for the ladies. That was such a weird 
So this will piss people off. I don't care. It's my channel. It did such a weird <laughs> freshman marketing class 101 from a liberal university of, oh, how about this? Cause it's, it's not, there's no even, there's no he in the word. It's one thing if it's cute, if there's somewhere you could say there's a he in it and you switch it to her, that's cutesy. Mm. But just doing bass mast her, is that a little too on the nose? in 2024 when there's been a like we're after the hashtag me too and we've really pendulum this far in pop culture you see this in movies where like indiana jones is getting replaced by a, a female lead. like it's big in pop culture i don't know it just felt a little tacky to me i'm not against women fishing or anything go check out the yeah. interview i did with emily but it's just i don't know i didn't i didn't like that well and you know back to you know what we were talking about as far as the sponsors go uh, you know, for me, it's it's been a lot better. But you know, speaking with Fluke now, I haven't been in in the you know really in the on the paid side and trying to do this you know sort of full time and you know for very many years. Really, I think out of the nine years I've been doing this, eight or nine, I don't even know now. But uh, you know, my first paid sponsor was probably only three years ago. Wow. So. Uh, but you know, I didn't look and, and again, people don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's hard to learn, uh, and you will get taken advantage of a lot out there because, you know, uh, you're, you're, you, you're going to go fishing and to start fishing, you're going to use baits. And when you use somebody's baits, they're going to make money, whether, mm -hmm. you know, you, you know, trying to or not. But what I've discovered is I kind of go at it because I don't like exclusive contracts. So I like to be able to use anything. Uh, now, yeah, sure. My graphs, I can't afford to buy 22 graphs. <laughs> so I will work with Garmin if Garmin wants to work with me. By the way, heck yeah, yes. And, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, so, so that sort of, there are certain things, you know, that, you know, like boat steps, like I'm not going to run through 23 sets of boat steps. So, yeah, you know, the, I, I went and reached out to the company I liked and I work with them. But the point is, is, you know, I think from the creator side, the sponsors are there. Now they're not paying what they're paying pros. And I understand that one way. I'm not a pro. But I'll promise you, people that watch my channel buy more prey. And, and this isn't me guessing. It's what companies are telling. So, I'm gonna, you know, that, that's a little bit. But I want to tee this uh, up for you here. Um, and so we'll start with a positive. So Travis says, uh, I want to ask Geek how he likes his Camus boat. Listen, I love my Camus boat. And anybody that ever wants to take a ride, I'm I'm not sponsored by Camus. I tell people this all the time. Camus did help me out a little bit. Uh, that was that is my dream boat. Uh, I've owned two bass boats. I'm actually going to sell the 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 Triton, old Ruby, if anybody knows, mm. uh, which makes me really sad. It makes me really really sad. There's a lot of memories in that boat. That's my first ever bass boat, and she's got a lot of battle scars. I ain't gonna lie, but. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But I'm, you know, she still fishes and runs good. But the Camus man, I love it. Like I love my boat. So our, our boat deals. I'm gonna set the stage for this. High school and college angling has become so big, and in high schoolers, 16 to 18 year olds get all this product shown on them. And you go to college, and then maybe a, your local boat dealership says, "Son, I want to sign you to a boat deal." Is that kind of sometimes a bad decision financially? Is it all it's cracked up to be? Is there a lot of stuff you need to understand in the fine print when you sign that? Oh, ink? my God. There's so much. Um, yeah, I, yeah, go ahead, Geek. But I, I feel a little bit of the beans. A boat deal ain't no deal. It ain't no deal. Uh, there ain't no such thing as a free boat. You will pay it. There will be two different options made to you. Most boats, most boats force you to still go through a dealer, which means the dealer can still charge you more money. Now, very few pros go straight through the company themselves. Very few pros get a free boat. And even a free boat is not free. What that means is an at-cost boat 
with deferred 10 month payments, which means you get the boat, you run it for 10 months, all those accessories you have to work out deals with. So if you, because when you talk about a free boat, we're not talking about the motor. We're talking about the hull and the trailer. Mm -hmm. That's it. So you've got to work out a deal with the motor. You've got to work out a deal with the, uh, uh, power poles and the graphs and all your electronics and your, then you got to work out a deal for somebody to wire it all up and you can go through and add, you know, I mean, I'll be honest, I got a decent deal, but uh, the difference the here's the difference in YouTube and pro land elite pros get free power poles. Some, the electronics world this is what I'm finding out. Do, do not contribute to that much money. You'd be really surprised wow. uh, to the professional tournament world. Uh, most pros pay something for their electronics. Few are sponsored, and the few that are sponsored are either people like Jacob Wheeler now, who started buying all of his stuff, but then Lawrence gave him a big fat check and then other people who just can't afford to sell a boat with electronics and buy them every year. So they're, they're taking some sort of bigger discount, 40, 50%. And, you know, you've got to do that every single stinking year. And that goes for your motor, which is your biggest expense mm -hmm. <coughs> and everything you want to rig with it. And so, and then you've got to sell that every year. And then you've got to go back yeah. and renegotiate with all those people all over again. And it is a incredible headache. Why so, would you want to do and, that? And that's why, like, yeah, that's why at the end of the year, you see so many daggone bass boats up on the market. Yeah, and then you've got to hope, you know, that you, that you have got enough deals through yeah. all of those people that you can still sell it and at least pay off that loan whether it be 10 month deferred mm -hmm. or whether it be just a regular uh, payment uh, that, you know, where you, you get it and you still pay monthly throughout the year. And most, a lot of the pros, a lot of the bottom half of the field are losing money on those boats. So. And they're losing money in 2024. They're getting, the they're getting the payoff. And that's yeah. about it. And they're losing money in 2024 as well, big time, because there's yeah. a buttload of boats on the market right now. And it's then shook up the industry. That's boats, kayaks, you name it. The outdoor industry went from hero <clears throat> back in the during COVID to uh, now everybody has a boat that they want to sell. And there's plenty of deals out there if you're willing to drive. Yeah, and, and 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 there was a rumor that I heard, and uh, and first off, we got a super chat here from Cooper. Aaron says, "What's up, Brian?" What's up, brother? Um, so I heard this rumor. Don't know if it's I cannot confirm or deny it, but in baseball, a long time ago, what they did is they basically said bats are too hot, and so we don't want little Jimmy to die. So we put out this brand new emblem on here that says, if the bat has this little stamp, it's approved. And what that meant is all parents had to go out and buy a brand new bat because basically every other bat became illegal. And mm -hmm. I heard yep. allegedly there's a rumor like what they might start doing at the BFL level and stuff like this is they will start looking at saying like, well, you know that 1999 boat you have, technically that's no longer safe. So wow. you can't use that. Wow. <clears throat> and the and all, there are a lot of thoughts there about safety and stuff like that, but I'm looking at it as a way to start trying to stimulate the boating market. Which I think, well, I think what that, that'll do is stimulate the boating world to go more the kayak world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but that, but I don't understand why they would want to do that because you know that's what the contingency money was. And I mean, I got a father and son yeah. duo here on Smith Mount Lake or Bugs or wherever they fish Bugs, where they've been fishing the last couple of years. That sold their boat because they were winning so many tournaments. They were losing eight thousand dollars a tournament in contingency money. So mm -hmm. that's what that contingency money was kind of set up for was yeah. so, you know, every, I'm not, you know, I don't know the date. I don't, I don't own a boat guys, but what is it, every like five years you got to get a new boat because it, you know, 
you get so many years on to earn contingency money based yeah. on the manufacturer yeah. you go with. And that's yeah. how that's kind of set up. But that's what that was kind of put in line for was to give you extra money to stay with that brand. It's interesting because it, it's uh, what I got from that is I don't think it'll happen, but I feel like if they're talking about that, it means they think the boat market is hurting. Hurting, and I remember Brian. This time last year, we were around Christmas. We were complaining that you know Icon came out with their two hundred thousand dollar boat. Yeah. Um, and it's just like okay, that's bonkers. And now we're here, and the boat industry is flooded with all these boats that can't get sold. Um, and Everett also said on here too, uh, is it still worth to get a bass boat in this economy? Uh, as long as you don't get, as long as you don't go into debt for it. You know, people ask me, well, well, I just kayak fish. It's like, nope, that boat's paid off. So <laughs> I don't have to Everett, worry about that. Everett, I'll be honest with you, dude. If you got cash, now is the perfect time. Mm -hmm. It really is. It cash talks. Um, and there are a lot of boats on the market. And I'm hearing yeah, people yeah. having to drive. You know, I mean, I'm not talking about drive like around the corner. I'm talking about drive states. Yeah. To, fed, to get a good deal. But I mean, the deals are out yeah, there now. Deals, now is a buyer's market. If you got cash, they're gonna talk because yeah. they need to eat or pay an electric bill, pay a cable bill. So yeah. now's the time if you really want a boat to buy. It's uh, I, and I always say this. Look, you know, a bass boat to, to me, you're better off doing what realistically what tactical bassing has done over the years and you know you can get any kind of boat you want but something that's a little bit older might need a little bit of work to it mm -hmm. you might want to go ahead and repower it but to me you know i've got a 98 triton with a 98 johnson on it and you know i've i've fished out of that boat for 20 years i mean until, you know, I always said until I could afford it or the bass told me that, uh, you know, that boat was too ugly. They wouldn't go and buy my stuff. Then, you know, I was going to fish out of it forever. And the the biggest reason my wife wanted me to, to buy a new boat really more than I did. Uh, but the biggest reason why I didn't just repower that boat was because it's, it's a 98. It was the first run 98 of Triton boats. And they only got it rated for a 200. Mm. I can't even oh. put a 225 on it. So, but that Johnson motor lasts forever, dude. Yeah. And I mean, uh, guys, that was, I, I would mean, kill I, to know how many hours is on that. Motor. Yeah. That, I, would I mean, I, I know a lot of people that are a lot older than me and Geek and all of us, and they swear by that motor. I mean, if you yeah. take care of it and do what you need to do to it, that yeah. motor will last you. It's like, yeah, it's well. like buying a Tundra, boys and girls. It, it is. That's the other that's thing too. The truck market, Jesus wept. I, Fifty-five thousand, sixty thousand dollars for a new yeah. truck. It's and sometimes it's even more. And my truck, yes. it, it it's on its last leg, and I'm looking at it getting a new vehicle, and, and that is freaking insane. Um, and that's a whole other tangent. I don't want to go down, but um, you got Brian, we got a, uh, we got Paul here that says uh, the boat market is terrible right now. Look at the new models coming out that are significantly less than new boats last year. Uh, yep. You have the new Phoenix, new Bass Cat, etc. And the other thing too, I think boating will start aging like cars. And what I mean by that is there are going to be years and models that will actually hold or go up in value. Classic Rangers, you know, that early mm -hmm. 2000s hall design. I, you look at those things and they, they haven't gone down at all. You can find those things and they're pretty rock solid. How many of these new Bass Cats or, or some of these other models, I'll just pop that one out there, are going to age well? I, I don't think with how they're being made right now, because ever since COVID, a lot of things like trucks now, they're not what they used to be with all the plastic and the bells and whistles. You'd be crazy to buy a brand new truck compared to getting certain year classes of like a Ford that are bulletproof. But it, yeah, get, get one well broken. Mm, and then we got a big D says, uh, I'm test driving a boat Monday. What should I look out for? Com uh, God, that's a big ass. Sorry, that's a big word. Compression, compression, compression test. Uh, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a talker. A compression <clears throat> test was good. I had Billy Cole show it to a friend. So what are some things to look out for when you're test driving a boat? You know, uh, just your standard stuff, man. I mean, for the most part, you know, when it's in the water, go back there and lift the battery compartment. You want to be able to look down into the bilge, see if it's taking on any water. Uh, make sure all your pumps are working. Make sure all your lights and your electronics are working. You know, um, how much gear they've got in it, you know, see how it planes out, you know, uh, uh, mm -hmm. you know, 
basically, you know, just the basic sort of stuff when you're test driving it. I will go on to the OCD side of it, and I am very organized, and I like to have everything laid out for you. And that's my opinion. You know, the motors are all pretty much the same. Uh, and most of the hulls are pretty much all the same now. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, maybe a couple inches here, but they're pretty all the same. And you really need to decide how you fish and the level that you want to fish, mm -hmm. you know, how it's all laid out. You know, how organized do you want to, are you just a guy that throws bags in the bottom of the, you know, the storage? Or are you someone who likes having things broke out so you're not having to search? It's pretty interesting here. But, um, <coughs> I, I don't want to say nothing. They're kind of disorganized around my house, but you know, but they get mad when they can't find something and they say a few bad I words. But it's, I can't but it's like if, if you would have cleaned out or organized or put together before, you wouldn't have to worry about that. And I kind of believe that the same way on a boat as well. I mean, it's keeping neat, organized. And one of our writers the other day on our newsletter, I mean, he, he had pulled all his tackle out for the end of the year and was getting cleaned up for next year. So, mm. The layout of the boat has more to do with anything. I was a big fan of the Phoenix boat when it came it out with the, with the carousel in it, and I love that because and and I'll good. I'll tell you what else to Brian's point. Um, get somewhere where there's going to be some boat wake. Throw the oh, troll yeah. motor down, stand on the front deck, and and put her on high. Mm -hmm. See what it does. How how that front deck? Because I'm older, and listen, I, I love speed. You know, if if a if a bullet boat was a little more stable, the casting deck was a little more stable. Bullets, yeah, yeah, I'd I'd roll, mm -hmm. but it's why I don't own a bullet. You know, mm. uh, I uh, my Camus, you know, I can I can push her to seventy two with even with my big rear end, fairly fairly loaded. How fast uh, is too fast? Because I know like the Bass Cat's like this I don't thing will go one hundred and fifty. <laughs> <laughs> and it ain't it ain't because i want to get to the hole faster than everybody else it's just because i like to go fast <laughs> I, oh my god i don't care if somebody beats me there i mean when you go off in flights i don't expect to beat them if i'm in the last flight i just want to go fast <laughs> oh my god you <laughs> hp fishing I'm, a, I'm like ricky bobby of bass fishing you know? <laughs> oh god bless your heart <laughs> Uh, I got Brew Tank here. It says Bass Geek looking a little too professional, a little too professional, or is it just me? Uh, yeah, he does look all dressed up for work. Yeah, dude, he's looking. Yeah, fly. I just got off work. Sorry, guys. Uh, Sorry, I don't look my normal redneck self. <laughs> you apologizing for looking clean? <laughs> People didn't know I took baths. <laughs> oh my god, that is hilarious! All right, couple more questions here, guys. No, I had hair too. I think that's what's going on. I think that look. I think you should actually keep that look nope. for your live streams. I think. Nope, I think that's looking good. Nope, um, a little gray and little them ain't highlights in there. <laughs> I say, if you ain't first, you're last. Absolutely. Uh, Travis Cyberg, uh, check the transom in the bottom of the boat, and the more yes. receipts, the better for a boat. 100% agree. Yep. Uh, we've got two more questions here on Instagram, then we're going to be done with the Instagram thing, which is uh, repower is, uh, Billy Cole says, repowering is the way to go. Plenty of super nice 2010 to 2017 hauls out mm -hmm. there. Uh, my 08 13 ranger 520 is still better than most new boats i agree uh yeah you don't have to go chase the bright and shiny new thing and then we got one more here oh. from oh lord i can do this name h b ha no h b h boys oh i b h boys this is a friend of mine oh, okay gotcha bass geek has helped me grow my five social media good god five wow dude five social media platforms to a crazy following i run india Oh, Indiana. Okay, that's a different. That's that's. I don't. I don't. Oh, now, that's easy. I don't do no training. <laughs> we just. Oh, oh my God. As for as only a only nineteen ninety nine for only nineteen ninety nine. I thought for a minute there, dude, you were doing some kind of like uh, no, HR I'm stuff for India. Yeah. But now we have talked about this. Yeah, maybe one of these days we'll do that. Oh my God, that's hilarious. That is so funny. Uh, thought he had a court date or something. Well, that's because he was going too fast on the water. That's why. <laughs> yeah. Um, we have a lot of great shows here going up. This Wednesday, we'll be recording here with the Bass Cast Radio, which will air the following Monday. Uh, Brian, yes. I'll put you on the spot. Are we going to be winging it? 
on Wednesday, or it'll be a surprise. Oh, show. let's see. Have a guest pop up. Um, I haven't really, guys. I ain't gonna lie. We kind of, we kind of wing it all here at the Basscast.com, okay. Basscast Radio. So I'm, because, I'm gonna break but, some bad news to you. Geek won't be. I'm there. not gonna be able to make it Wednesday. It's my wife's birthday. So. Uh oh. Well, happy birthday to hers. That's more yeah, important. Sorry. Than, uh, so we might get a guest. On. I do want to stay married. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So we'll probably get a guest, guys, and uh, we haven't decided which direction we're going. But uh, I knew I was going to be on here tonight, so I didn't really mess with it too much. But yeah, guys, we record every Wednesday night, upload on Monday mornings. No, um, if you guys haven't, if you guys haven't checked out our newest stuff that we have going on, um, we got before the first cast, which was started this year, and you know Calvin Herndon's running that, and we got. It's something I've been wanting to do for quite a while is have two shows. Um, I can't do a Thomas deal because I do run a website and I can't record five nights a week. But I really did want two shows because your larger podcast have a, a Monday as well as a Friday show. So check out that. It's also on Bass Cash Radio. We haven't decided to split them in half yet because we already have a bunch of followers and we just want to keep it that way. So, but uh, yeah. Check out Basket's Radio and appreciate you having us on, Thomas. Guys, uh, all of the stuff Brian is talking about is linked already in the episode description, and that will also be up there on the Sweet. re-upload. Uh, Geek, what do you got coming up? Uh, we've got some pretty good videos getting ready to drop over the course of the next couple of weeks. Uh, you know, we've got a little fall pattern video that uh, we we kind of hit here the other day. You know, we was talking about how tough it was. We're throwing mm -hmm. a spinner bait, but there's a very particular thing that happens, at least on my lakes. We're going to talk about that when the scoping ends and the shad actually kind of disappear on you a little bit mm -hmm. this time of year. Uh, and the bass, especially on largemouth lakes, disappear. And there's something you can do to catch some really good ones this time of year. Uh, we've got another one where I'm going to talk about why I think confidence lures are a myth. Why, instead of it being confidence lures, I think we should change that to comfort lures. Hmm. Well, I mean, yeah, it's almost like if a coach, <clears throat> you know, you, 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 you dabbled in football, just has a play that he always uses on third down. Yep. It's like, is it because it works or it's because you got confidence in it or comfort yeah. or how would you put it? Yeah, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. And we could get into that whole mindset thing for an hour and a half. Do you do like a 48 hour turnaround time? Because I know sometimes you shoot till like midnight and then drive home. Is that something that you're uploading in two weeks, in three weeks or the next day? <laughs> speaking. So, so <laughs> we were, we were a little behind because I decided I was burnt out to death last Monday and needed to take a break. So and I only had one day off, and I work 12-hour swing shifts, so I'll work 6.30 uh, you know, a.m. to 6.30 p.m. or 6.30 p.m. to 6.30 a.m. I'm on day shifts right now. I was on night shifts last weekend, so, and then we were off, you know, I was off this weekend. So, anyway, <clears throat> the point is uh, I only had one day off, and I just wanted to stay home. So, of course, we, we try to stay about two weeks ahead is what we try to stay ahead. Now, we plan and schedule. Fishing videos, you can't really plan those, right? Mm -hmm. So those are always priority. If we go out and, you know, we catch five bass and, you know, you know uh, like I said, on the lakes I fish, uh, the tournament Saturday took all of four and a half pounds to win, you know. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, not very compelling content when I go out and catch three and a half and could have finished second. That's you know? insane. So, but hey, I'm proud of myself. I went out there and caught three and a half in four hours. So you That's know, impressive. I feel That's like awesome. if, I'd have, if I'd have stayed on the water, I'd uh, I could have probably you know won that tournament. But uh, you know, uh, but yeah. So we've got all that stuff coming up, and I didn't lost what I was saying. Anyway, you know, as far as <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, I've got I'm circled back around now. But yeah, you know, we I do not do forty eight. Most of the time when uh you catch me and I have to miss Brian and Brian, I apologize for not being there. Is what's happening is is I try to go out and fish for about four hours. Cause I only get to fish where I do work. I only get to fish for maybe uh two days. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's one day a week. So what ends up having to happen is, you know, I go out there, 
I try to fish for about four or five hours. And as the days get shorter during the wintertime, it makes it even worse. It's a nightmare. It's even mm-hmm. harder. And so we try to shoot about three uh, instructional how-to or, you know, that sort of videos on the second half of the day. So then like today, you know, uh, luckily enough, I've got my best friend who is, uh, you know, editing for me. And so he's, he's trying to, cause we got nothing for tomorrow right now. We've, <laughs> he's, oh, he, he is literally editing the video, uh, to today and tomorrow. We're hoping we're going to be able to get it done in time. So, um, uh, you know, so that's kind of, you know, we try to stay three weeks ahead, but with work and, and managing and you know i send out you know somebody was talking to me and we we were talking about a company that reached out to me today i'm not going to say what they are but that's kind of forcing my hand because i've got another company that i work with already and another company that i kind of want to work with and then this is a cool company so now i've got to get all this together and kind of send that out to these Mm. three companies and I've got end of year reports and I've got some contracts that are up uh, in September that ain't done. And I've got contracts that I've got to get ready for the first of the year. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm a one man show, man. I mean, it's uh, other than my buddy who thank God, because I wouldn't be where I'm at without a, the fishing geeks and B uh, my friends along the way, who's took some of the editing off of me that allows me to handle some of the business uh, the way that I want to do it, because like I said, <clears throat> I don't do, uh, and you get paid less if you're not doing um, exclusive contracts. So, you know, but that allows me to fish and still make videos about any competitor, like with Berkeley, who I know hates me because I said one of their rods was a turd when I broke five of them a few years back. But, mm. you know, <laughs> so. But I love their finisher, so you know that's an incredible bait. If y'all haven't seen that video, you should go check it out. And all that. Hey guys, real good man. Uh, Cooper Aaron, you know, came on a little while ago. Uh, give a shout out. Want to give a shout out for him, guys. Nineteen years old. He won the Big Bass Tour event two weeks wow. ago. Uh, he was fishing out of his dad's fish and ski. That's cool uh, he's also fishing by himself. On top of that. And uh, he ended up taking home a brand new nitro bass boat. So congratulations to him. It's pretty cool to see. I, I guys, I don't want to take this away from anybody. I mean, winning this thing's cool, but to see someone who needs a boat yeah. take home a boat, and uh, just like I told him, I mean, you know, the boat can go away, but there's only so many people that can say right now that they won a big bass tour event on Smith of Mill Lake, that, and that's a. And one. I think he was the second youngest to ever win one. Wow. So. There he is there. So, yeah, I mean. Boom. He's not dead, guys. We just want to let you know. He's still with us. No. So, I just want to give a shout out. Congratulations. All these people that are planning on taking that boat from him. <laughs> yes, don't take the boat. But, no, it's pretty freaking cool to see to see that happen. I, I told everybody the final day. I was there all three days, and I told him, I was like, it's going to happen the final day. Someone's going to win this bad boy, and congratulations to him. So Dude, that's awesome. It's pretty, pretty freaking awesome. So. Yeah. And, Cooper, you're on my list. I have about nine episodes I have to drop. So I'll be getting to you eventually. Uh, it's on my big to do list. Uh, but as always guys, link in the episode description, to everything that we talked about, as always, I'm going to bring this down and I'm going to polish it up and re upload it tomorrow to Apple, Spotify, our heart radio and the old YouTube. Like subscribe to all these gentlemen right here. And, uh, we will see you guys next time on fishing the DMV. Bye. You're listening to fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Aaron's. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.